Hello and welcome to my last video for 2016 and unexpectedly I'm home today. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't expecting to be home on the 31st on New Year's Eve but I have a sick boy at home who's got shocking uh, sunburn and can't go out anywhere and I'm having to constantly apply uh, aloe vera. <laughs> So I'm at home doing a bit of art in between and managed to get this video done. At this point, I've, I'm doing this beautiful dark girl and I saw this lovely hairdo and I just loved it. And at this point, I'm like, oh, maybe I should just leave the sketch. <laughs> I love the sketch, but no, I wanted to paint it. I, don't, I haven't done much with painting darker skin tones before, so I thought, no, well, I'll... I'll do that and see how I go. So I just thought I would get the uh, proportions right in. And of course, something that I never advise you to do is actually work over the top of a, a center fold like I am here. Um, it's really difficult and the right eye is a little bit it looks smaller but that's because it goes down over the fold and it was very difficult to get that same shape so uh, with me I'm looking at a uh, larger nose because um, she's a dark girl and she's got a larger nose uh, and I'm also looking at uh, larger lips and so I'm constantly just playing. I'm using a Karen Diash uh, charcoal pencil. I really like it. It's really good, except when I'm going over the fold. So the sketch is not looking brilliant now, I realise. Not looking brilliant at all, really. But um, I play with the proportions and keep playing with them and keep playing with them until I get it right. And some some of this is a, some of this video is a little bit off the page, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. But it's off the page, um, and I just keep working on this until I find that which works for me. And I, it's like that faffing around; you just work with it. Um, I'd already glued on. Uh, I think it's like a Stampington kind of. Uh, art journaling paper insert that I got out of a Somerset magazine and I, this is just um, a journal that I made out of one of my old music books and I've just kind of I've been doing some Jane Davenport sketching in there but I just thought oh I, I like the size of it and I really like uh, that page and I and I just had a yen to actually do a darker skin girl so what I'm doing is I'm using my Americana paints and I've started off with medium flesh in the Americana range and then I'm using uh, Ceram Coat Dunes Beige and um, and the other colour that I use a lot is Transparent Umber in a Matisse and I use that over the top and that gives a really nice warmth to the face. Uh, so I put this base colour down so that I have this undertone and I just put that everywhere. You can't leave whiter spaces for darker faces. And of course the charcoal's mixing in a lot with the undercoat of that Americana medium flesh at the moment. But I'm just working it in. I'm using a uh, oval brush. So I'm using, gosh I'm having a mental blank at the moment. What am I using? Not a bright. A filbert. There we go. So I'm using a, a medium a medium kind of filbert here. And I do a lot of the features with that. I don't start using my fine brushes till a little bit later on. So now I'm going to pull a palette out and I'm just using a disposable palette. It's really, really hot here today. I've allowed that charcoal on the right hand side of the face to act as a shadow. And I've used far too much paint, but you know, you get that. But then again, I'm just working with the layers. And of course, it looks really, really light here. And you think, ooh, that's not going to look good. But I blend it in, blend it in, blend it in. One of the things with this is it looks ugly until it doesn't. 
And I just had to persist with this until I got how I wanted it to look. I was just putting in my lighter values and had a thought at this point when I'm looking at it going, mm, that's not looking great. Had a thought that the transparent umber would look great because it's a transparent color. You would see the background coming through, but you would also see its own warmth. So here it is. I put the transparent umber in and I start putting those shadows in and immediately you can see that I'm getting some warmth into that skin, which I love because this is kind of the look that I was going for. And oh, I'm just watching my own technique here. It looks pretty good. <laughs> you just play around, play around. This video is sped up about three and a half times. So overall, and the video is about, I don't know, 30 minutes long roughly. And so it took me, uh, you know, a little bit longer than that. I faffed around with it, got interrupted a lot. Uh, had visitors drop in unexpectedly, had things like that going on. So I did this over a couple of hours and really enjoyed it. I had the backgrounds already pre-prepared, so I didn't need to worry too much about that. And I have an idea that I'm going to put tribal markings on her later on. So her skin needs to be good, but it doesn't need to be absolutely perfect. Um, because I'm going to be doing a lot of tribal markings on her face later on. Love that. So sometimes you see me correcting my zoom focus just so that you can see me working. See the warmth that's coming in? Love that warmth that's coming in now. And the shadows are just, yeah. And you'll see me just faffing around with all of these details until I'm finished. I'll put some music on now.
So for Christmas, Santa got me some Caran d'Ache Luminance pencils and I'm very impressed. I'm going to do a Technique Friday on these at some point but they are absolutely beautiful pencils and they are the only pencils in the world that are where the whole range is uh, light fast radist at the highest level. So these pencils I could use on art that I sell because they would work really well and they would last and not bleach and fade. So I'm really enjoying them here and I'm just working uh, working in tones of chocolate, black and a deep grey and then this is a lemon yellow and I'm just working over the paint which is a little bit gritty because it's a folk paint so it's fine <clears throat> and then I thought I would use a vermilion so it's a crimson vermilion and I used it really watered down of course it's going over the the paint that's already been there you can see the red at the bottom that it's really quite red but I'm watering it down quite a lot and I'm just gradually doing more and more layers on that very light layers because less is more in this case and I really wanted to have um, a contrast between the top and the bottom lip and the lips are really large on this girl that I'm the reference photo for this girl it's just gorgeous and I love those beautiful full lips you can kind of see a bit of the music coming through that bottom lip a little bit more which is awesome so I'm just putting some uh, more realistic feathering into her eyelashes and into her eyebrows which I just love like I love the way the eyebrows turned out and I love how they're not absolutely perfect that pale yellow works just as well as a white for this I find that it's probably a little bit better I'm using a, like a fuchsia in the luminance range just to add a little bit of color and then a pale pink here just to give some depth and, and to show a little bit of additional 3D parts and to give some light to her eyes. <clears throat> She's looking pretty gorgeous at this point. I'm really quite happy with her. So now you start seeing me doing some of the tribal marking. Really excited about that. Um, and I'm just using the back of paintbrushes. And I'm like, oh, this looks really cool. And then, of course, as the paint wears out, you have bigger and smaller dots and things like that. So you have to figure out where the bigger and smaller dots go. <laughs> I like it, though. And I, and I just keep working. You're going to see this one go off. So I've sped it all up. You don't have a lot of this. But I'm now just working on the final details. So you see a lot more of that. I'll zoom it out in a minute. But I'll put some music back on.
So I've used, uh, you know, what they call a comb brush and that works really well for the hair. You're seeing a little bit of light flicking up because the transparent nature of those, they're like a semi-gloss kind of paint. Uh, but you'll see I flick it up at a little bit and it's just gorgeous. Now I'm using that dot method to just use some of that Australian Sienna to put in her hoop earrings and there was kind of uh, bobbly bits on those hoop earrings so I've just added some of those in and I then had the idea to then work a little bit more with the colors and and keep her palette consistent all the way through um, and she's wearing sort of like a crocheted dress so it's like a woven crocheted dress so it's got this beautiful kind of chocolatey outer edge and then it's and I'm putting kind of where the stitches meet in and then it's got white so it's got this brown background and then it's got these white kind of loop stitches so I've just popped that in just to give it a little bit of difference and then I'm going to use a little bit more of the white and I'm going to dot it around do the same thing just so I can see some of the dots and then I'm going to scribble in those dots in a minute and create like these chain stitches but I'm really into the dots for this I really like that they really um stand out I think and so I'm getting more random with my splatterings um, with the back of the brush and you see I start to create kind of like a chain or a knitted almost like a knitted kind of look against the darker background though and then I go out and scribble into some of the others as well so now I get the idea to use, um, I'm going back in with the Karen DR charcoal pencil and I'm also using now an 8B Lumograph graphite pencil because that's almost kind of waxy and it's permanent and it just allows me to put these final features in over the top. So put the shadows in and I like the sketchy nature of that then it adds it in additionally and I can add in some additional shadows and and form and feature into the hair and into the lips and I can put some really nice uh, shadows in the earrings and just in uh, the areas of her face I'm really liking that so yep yeah, there's the gold Liquitex paint marker so I'm just going around using that And I decided that uh, I would do some more dots on her face and uh, do more intricate work, which is pretty cool. The paint markers are lovely. And also, too, if you're going to use it in the hair and stuff like this, see how I'm smudging it. So you can see how I smudge it so that it's not got the defined lines so much. <clears throat> and I think I've pretty much... Oh no, there we go. So then I decided that I would doodle more kind of almost tribal tattooing on her face, which I kind of really like. So it's looking really cool. Love that look. It just looks so amazing, I think. So I'm just adding some gold in on top of the white. And I'm going to draw a pendant in. So it's like pretty round. And she's got this kind of wire pendant going on. So you can see that I'm just going in with the Lumograph again, just with more final sketches. I've just put some shadows in. And here's my final stretch. So uh, I love the Maya Angelo. Um, a quote that I used here and I think she kind of is looking modern but then also looking um, like she's in touch with her culture and that's something that I really liked about this page and I kept the background simple I'm, I'm pretty much known for keeping backgrounds pretty simple and 
I like varying all my letters. I, I always encourage uh, my students to work with their own writing and develop different alphabets and play around with their lettering so that it works for them and, and use different types of pens when you're doing something. So I'm just using a biro here. But it just worked really well because, of course, this is over clear gesso because it, you can see that the the page in beside, you know, underneath was just that slightly semi-gloss, so I needed a good surface to be able to work with. And I decided to write a few of my thoughts about the year that 2016 was. I've got a little bit of washi tape there, so I got some washi tape for Christmas of Santa, and it's kind of wood grains with different patterns on it. So I thought uh, I would write some of my thoughts here, and it's all about those that we've lost this year, and but also the hope that a new year brings, and also the thought that there's still plenty of talent left in the world and new people will make their mark and they will collaborate and cultures collide and I like the thought of that melting pot of the world you know like it's really cool and I think too uh, when you're trying to rub out even faint lines over um clear gesso I've gone for a hard eraser in the end here and make sure that all your pen is dry because that's really important <laughs> so I just want to say thank you for a great 2016 all my subscribers love that you come and my channel's growing really well I'm I pray that you've got a really blessed year in 2017 and that it brings you everything that you hope and new opportunities um, I've got a really busy year ahead so I'm hoping that it's great for everyone ciao for now and um, learn something new today keeps you young <laughs>